Cincinnati. Marv Albert with Bob Greasy, the Jets leading Cincinnati by the score, 21-17. Two touchdowns scored by Freeman McNeil, and McNeil has had an impressive first half. A game that began with the 96-yard kickoff return by Bobby Humphrey. The Bengals came back, then a six-yard run by McNeil gave the Jets a 14-7 lead. Asias into Collinsworth tied it at 14 on a 12-yard pass play. McNeil ran it in from two yards away for a 21-14 lead. And then Breach with the 43-yard field goal. So at halftime, a 21-17 Jet lead. Now let's go to Bob Costas at NFL 86. Welcome back to NFL 86. Bob Costas with Paul McGuire and Ahmad Rashad. Let's take a look at highlights. Some of you in our audience are watching the Jet Bengal game. Let's go to Riverfront Stadium and take a look at some of what transpired in the first half. The Bengal mascot, plenty nervous, and he should be. Bengals have to win today and then hope for help with either Kansas City or the Patriots losing to get a wild card berth. And here's how it begins for Cincinnati in disastrous fashion. Bobby Humphrey takes it on the opening kickoff, and 96 yards later, he's in the end zone. The Jets trying to snap a four-game losing streak, have a 7 to nothing lead. After Stanley Wilson's two-yard touchdown run tied it, the Jets fake a field goal and do it perfectly. Ryan pulls it away at the last second. Leahy does his part to make it look good, and Ryan scampers 11 yards on the fake to give them first and goal at the six. It's Freeman McNeil's turn from there. He'll take it in from the six-yard line, and the Jets have the lead at 14-7. Now we move to later action in that same second quarter, and Boomer Esiason is about to tie it. On first and 10 from the Jets' 12-yard line, he'll find the great veteran Chris Collinsworth, he's in, and it's even up at 14. The Jets patch together a drive of their own with just 38 seconds to play until halftime. In goes McNeil for his second score of the day, and it looks as if that'll end it, but Cincinnati is able to come back quickly and get close enough for Jim Breach to drill a field goal and cut it to 21-17 at the half. I'm not... Bobby, you know, the Jets still haven't got their high-flying offense back on track. Their problem has been that their wide receivers have not made any big plays in the last four games. As a matter of fact, in the last four games, it's it's been McNeil and Schuler who have caught the majority of passes. Now, they're doing very well right now, 21-17, but it's all on running. they got to come back. they got to hit these outside guys to get their offense back on. You want big plays? Kansas City special teams have turned in big plays today in Pittsburgh. Chuck Knoll Steelers have been playing very well. In fact, they've got some of the fans at Three Rivers downright insane. There they are. But watch what happens as Harry Newsom attempts to punt. This is in the first quarter, and it's blocked. Deron Cherry will come up with it for the touchdown, and the Chiefs have a 7-0 lead. The first of three touchdowns in the first half produced by Kansas City special teams. The score was 10-3 in the second quarter when Gary Anderson's kickoff following a Steeler field goal was taken by Boyce Green. He brings it back 97 yards and the Chiefs lead 17-3. It was 17-9 in the closing seconds of the second quarter, 17-6 I should say, when Gary Anderson tried to make it 17-9, but instead it's blocked and Lloyd Burris picks it up and scampers 78 yards. It's a 10-point turnaround. Instead of the score being 17-9, to it's 24-6 to at the half in favor of Kansas City. Chiefs don't have to watch the scoreboard. If they lose this game, they're out of the playoffs. If they win, they've cinched a wild card. Paul? And the special teams coach will get the game ball if they go on to win this football game. It's a dream for, for a special teams coach. You know, you're scoring every way you can. The offense of the Kansas City Chiefs all year long struggling. Defense playing ex extremely well. But when you have your special teams and when you play 16 games in the National Football League, Bobby, the special teams can either win or lose four of those games for you. And they're gonna, it looks like the Kansas City Chiefs special teams will win this game for them. It looks like the Washington Redskins might go into the playoffs with a three-game losing streak. At the half at Veterans Stadium, Philadelphia leads them today 14 to nothing. San Diego is at Cleveland. The Browns already are champs of the AFC Central. They've already got home field throughout the AFC playoffs, but they'd like to finish 12-4, and four, and they lead 20-10 to 10 at home against the Chargers after the first half. Ozzie Newsome along the sideline. He's got at least one reception in 114 consecutive games. Razzle Dazzle in the first quarter. The handoff to Herman Fontenot. Fontenot will take that handoff from Kozar and then throw to the wide open Webster Slaughter. The rookie's in for a 46-yard touchdown and a 7-0 Cleveland lead. 
But any time you go up against Dan Fouts, you can't be certain of victory. It was 14-0 Cleveland when Fouts got into the act. He hits West Chandler with a 19-yarder, cuts it to 14-7. A Ralph Bernerska field goal of 40 yards made it 14-10. But watch this. Just before the end of the half, Brian Brennan catches a long pass from Kozar. Nobody touches him. So he bounces up at the 8-yard line and goes in for the touchdown, which gives Cleveland the lead at 20-10 at the half. Minnesota at halftime playing at home in front of the Saints 30-3. Wade Wilson in for Tommy Kramer. Kramer is the NFC's starting Pro Bowl quarterback, but he's out with an injury. Wilson has thrown three first-half touchdown passes. The Falcons, after a strong start, have lost seven of their last eight, but finishing up the season at Pontiac, they lead the Lions 14-0 early in the third quarter. The Oilers and the Bills. Jim Kelly threw a 12-yard touchdown pass to Chris Burkett just before halftime to bring the Bills within three at the Astrodome, 10-7. The Cardinals have gotten two punt returns for touchdowns by the rookie from BYU, Vi Sikahima. Sikahima will play special teams for the NFC and the Pro Bowl. One of the few bright spots in the season for the Cardinals, who are 3-11-1. Neil Lomax has a two-yard touchdown run as well, and the Cardinals, playing at home, lead Tampa Bay 21-7. If Tampa loses this game, they've got the first draft choice this year, no matter what Indianapolis does later today against the Raiders. And of course, that first pick could be Vinny Testaverde. Back after this, from your local station. Who now gives the tree a real trimming. Merry Christmas! Will the family give him the axe? Let's move on to New Year's. Now, then. An amazing stories encore celebration. Cut that bag and raise those mittens. The Christmas one boy can save. Monday. Remember the long, hot days of summer driving? Now, save up to $775 and stay cool next summer. Just buy a new Buick Century or Skyhawk from your Better Buy Buick dealers. You'll get air conditioning at no extra charge. Now until December 31st, come in and make your best deal, and we'll deduct up to $775 for air conditioning. And remember, the sales tax deduction also ends on December 31st. Catch a winning deal at your Better Buy Buick dealers today. Please give to the Ruth Lyons Children's Christmas Fund. Welcome back to NFL 86. You know, the new modern ballparks, in a way, I guess they make sense. After all, they're convenient. They have larger seating capacities in most cases. They provide an opportunity for skyboxes. They're better constructed. But the old ballparks, the ones with tradition and character, well, they have something no modern facility can ever have. Down in the Orange Bowl, here's Frank DeFord. Old baseball stadiums can be so distinct in their peculiar geometry that we can always visualize them perfectly. Wrigley Field, Fenway Park, Yankee Stadium. But old football stadiums, horseshoes, all of them, bowls. The trouble with football stadiums is that they're all shaped like footballs. So football bowls aren't remembered so much for their own personality as by strictly what happened within the sideline stripes. How many of you can even remember where the most important game in pro football history was played? Well, it was two teams from up north, but it was right here, the Orange Bowl. Can you call up the morning star of your memory? January 12, 1969, Jets 16, Colts 7. Thank you, Matt Snell. Thank you, Jerry Philbin. Thank you, Broadway Joe. Don Shula was a coach in that game, Super Bowl III. Of course, on that occasion, he was the losing coach with Baltimore. He's come back to squeeze a lot of juice out of this big old orange, though. The only undefeated NFL team there ever was, the Dolphins of 1972. And that was Shula's team. Greasy and Warfield, Zonka and Kick, the guys with no names on defense. Only a handful of you watching, though, will recall that the Dolphins weren't the first professional team to use this as a home team. There was a club known as the Miami Seahawks, who played here for one season in the old All-American Conference just after the war. Back when Florida was some faraway place waiting to be discovered by air conditioning and Walt Disney. Actually, the Orange Bowl itself was created in the early years of the Depression as a gimmick to lure Yankee dollars down to Miami over New Year's. The first construction in 1935 was an 8,000 seat saucer made out of lumber left over from an American Legion convention. Then they brought in period northern powerhouses like Bucknell and Manhattan to play the old Suntan U, University of Miami. Luckily, the Orange Bowl parade was better than the games, and by the end of the 1930s, capacity was up to 38,000. Then they tore down the wooden bowl, built it back up of metal, and at last, 
double-decked it in 1948. The Dolphins moved in here in 1966. And if you've forgotten every other game they ever played, you'll never have this one slip your mind. San Diego versus Miami in the playoffs, January 1982. The Dolphins' famous hook and trail struck to Harris to Nathan. But Kellen Winslow, with 13 receptions, carried the Chargers to exhaustion and a 41-38 victory. And of course, because it's sunny Florida, the wonderful thing about the Orange Bowl is that it's always a beautiful day for a football game. Come on down. But now the Orange Bowl is going to be turned back strictly to the colleges. When New England plays Miami here tomorrow night, it'll be the end of the Orange for play for pay. The Dolphins will begin their schedule next summer in their own stadium a few miles up the road here at the Broward County line. It'll be beautiful enough, $100 million, 73,000 seats, everyone with a chair back, luxury boxes, parking for 14,000 cars, closed circuit TV, and all the concession stands. All new and improved. So I think I'll take a little old orange bowl grass for a keepsake from this old place. In fact, the only thing the Dolphin Stadium won't have is ghost. The ghosts stay right here at the Orange Bowl. The ghosts go with the place. Take it easy, guys. Halftime activities will continue. Please stay with us. Back in Cincinnati, Marv Alper with Bob Greasy. The Jets leading the Bengals 21-17. On the subject of uh, Frank DeFord's piece on tomorrow night's finale for the Dolphins at the Orange Bowl, will you be uh, back for that uh, final game? I'll be at the game. Uh, there are no special ceremonies planned. The Dolphin Stadium in uh, in North uh, Miami is uh, under construction and right on schedule. I know a lot of the teams around the National Football League will be happy that the Dolphins are leaving the Orange Bowl because they had a high percentage of wins in that stadium. And, uh, of course, the teams that are going down to play say, let's try a new stadium. Maybe they can win in that stadium. Maybe they can't, but we know they can win in the Orange Bowl. Well, you know Shula will establish some kind of home of field advantage at uh, the new uh, stadium. <laughs> I imagine you'll be protected by massive security to keep uh, people away from you tomorrow. Yeah, my normal entourage, uh, my son, my wife, whatever, you know. Right. <laughs> Ferdy, Pacheco. Well, the fight doctor will be yes, on the fight doctor. I know uh, folks out there are real thrilled with that. It must uh, be. Right. Uh, as we uh, mentioned uh, earlier, it has been a schizophrenic season for both the uh, Jets and the Bengals, but particularly uh, the Jets, who started out with a record of 10-1, and one, at one stretch, won uh, nine in a row. And uh, this is the way things have gone for the Jets uh, this season. Well, they've kind of started off. They kept going, and they were going up and up and up. And then, then at the very end, at the inconsistent part, they went straight down. Now, on the other side, the Bengals, their season has been a little bit different. They've been up and down and up and down. They've never lost more than one game in a row. So their season is inconsistent, but they feel like as long as... They have not lost two games in a row. They're going to be very confident, confident coming out this second half. Boy, you really can tell a story with that telescope. Yes, sir. All right, the kickoff return by Stanford Jennings. And we're underway in the second half. Checking out the first half statistics. The Bengals with the slight edge in terms of uh, time of possession and a good half for Boomer Esaias and 13 out of 17. Total yardage, the Bengals way ahead of the Jets, but not on the scoreboard. Jets with four possessions, two touchdowns out of four possessions. And both offensive teams have kept the ball when they've had it. And the Bengals first down from their 29-yard line, James Brooks. So the gyrations of Brooks 
Kevin MacArthur. MacArthur had seven tackles last week in the game against uh, Pittsburgh. He's done well filling in uh, since the injury suffered by Lance Mel. MacArthur was in the Jet training camp this summer for a third straight year. He had spent uh, some time with the Raiders two years ago and now is a starter with the Jets because of all those injuries uh, suffered by the Jets. Second down and five at the 34. Brooks in motion. And Wilson picked up a yard. Marty Lyons, who, as we mentioned earlier, is playing hurt, bothered by a sore shoulder, but has been able to hang in. Several of the Jet players are scheduled for surgery after the season. Lyons is one of them with that shoulder. And uh, as we mentioned, he's out there playing on guts alone. Third down and five. Joe Klecko and Reggie McElroy underwent surgery earlier this week. Esiason. Esiason found the room and has a first down and some more. A 23-yard run by the Boomer. As mobile as the size and is, he is not known as a scrambling quarterback. He's only scrambled 39 times this year and only averaged 3.0 yards per carry. This time he picks up quite a few more than that. Man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. All the linebackers were running over, covering their people, and nobody left to cover Esiason. And Esiason has run for 37 yards today. On three carries. First down at the Jet 43. Brooks. Inside the 40, Charles Jackson, the outside linebacker, number 55, on the tackle. A win for the Jets today would give them home field advantage in the wild card playoff game next Sunday if the Patriots beat Miami tomorrow night. And if New England loses, the Jets win the division whether they win or lose today. Of course, from the Jet point of view, they would want the victory. You don't want to go into the playoffs. Losers of five in a row. Second and six. Wilson to the 45-yard line. It'll set up a third down and two. The Jets go into the playoffs, Marv, after if they lose this game, losing five in a row. I don't think there's anybody that's going to give them much of a chance of going any further than the first game to the playoffs. They need they need to get some confidence and they need some respect coming out of this game here today. And Cincinnati is a tough football team to, to beat uh, in this ballpark. They are playing well. Uh, they're not playing like they did last week against Cleveland. Their offense is moving. And uh, they'll be a tough team to beat. Uh, the Bengals, as you saw, have been very proficient in third down situations in contrast to last week against the Cleveland Browns. But no proficiency here as Lester Lyle stops Larry Kinnebrew. Last week, it was just about in this area of the field that Sam Weitz went for it on fourth down. Now, it's too far for Breach to kick the, for the field goal. And if you punt the ball and you punt it into the end zone, you're only going to gain uh, close to 13, 14 yards down to the 20-yard line. Let's take another look as the uh, big Kinnebrew is stopped. <laughs> and three Jets hang on. <laughs> and Lester Lyles, a big, strong safety at 6'3", 218, stopping Larry Kennebrew. And it's a fourth down and one. Three and a half minutes in, third quarter. Play action. And Esiason in trouble. Rick Holding. Able to complete to the tight end, Holman, for the touchdown. Flag thrown, it appeared to be against the Jets. The Jets made two big mistakes. First of all, they held Holman at the line of scrimmage, giving the uh, Bengals a first down. And then after they held him, they didn't go covering. They saw Sizen running around, they let him go. He was 10 yards behind the secondary. Play action fake. Holman is being held. Now look to the top of your screen. You're not going to see it. 
blocked here, but Coleman, he was the one that was held the line of scrimmage, and then they let him go, and then he catches the ball for the touchdown. Good play by the Bengals, though, continuing with the play. You're right, the Jets throws a bad play. Charles Jackson was the man called on the hold, and here is Freak attempting the point after. So the Bengals move back on top of the Jets by three. If you just ask for a light, give me a light. You never know what you'll get. But <laughs> no, actually, uh, Bud Light. So if you want the less spilling light beer with the first name and taste, ask for Bud Light. Yours? No. As everything else. Give me a light. Showtime. It's just a light. And they received a better offer. How much? A hundred thousand. hundred thousand? You're kidding. And they want a response by noon. This meeting is taking place in different cities around the country. What makes it possible is AT&T Alliance Teleconferencing Service. What's incredible is it sounds like it's taking place in the same room. It's too risky. Let's be smart. Raise it by 20, but no higher. I agree. Set up your own phone meeting with a touchtone phone. 0700-456-1000. Good night, folks. Internationally patented suspension. Uncanny control. Conventional luxury sedans are built to survive accidents. BMW 528e is built to avoid them. Let's see if they're okay. is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, phone your nearest BMW dealer. By Nikon, we take the world's greatest pictures. And by AT&T, the right choice. On a 24-degree crisp day at Riverfront in Cincinnati with Bob Greasy, I'm Marv Albert. Head coach Sam Weiss checking the field out. Each of the last five possessions have resulted in scores by either the Jets or Cincinnati. Let's see what happens here as Bobby Humphrey returns. Good coverage by the Bengals. Let's go back and take a look, see if we can see the holding call right there. Now, 55 is Jackson. He's holding on to Holman to the right side of your picture. Still holding him. Now, Jack, now uh, Holman throws his hands up, says, what's going on? Now the flag comes in and says, yeah, you got holding. Now the touchdown and the score for the Bengals. Now this crowd urging the Cincinnati defensive unit on the Jets' first down from the 19 as McNeil peels off. O'Brien looking that way and threw a floater out of bounds. Flag is down. Robert Jackson covering Freeman McNeil who was out on the wing. And there was nobody open. You look downfield and there was a bingo right next to every jet. And Pat Haggerty calls it against the Jets. Illegal motion at the snap. And it is declined by Cincinnati. Sam White on Illegal the sideline. Number 24, declined, second down. Was McNeil going toward the line of scrimmage as he went in motion. That's illegal. Declined, White's on the sideline talking with his uh, offense as we look at the first half uh, scoring. Second and 10 at the 19. Soul coming across to the ground for McNeil. And he is bottled up. And the Cincinnati defensive unit now is on fire. Charged up by the good kickoff coverage led by Ed Brady and now Eddie Edwards on the stop of Freeman McNeil. This defense last year was very physical and tough, but they didn't have a lot of speed or quickness. They went out and drafted speed and quickness. They've got five players 
that are either in their first or second years that are starters, and they are all very quick. Burr down and nine. McNeil, short of the first down. Robert Jackson, the free safety, on the stop. Good pressure from Reggie Williams from the outside. And the Jets forced to punt. We're just talking about the speed and quickness. This play was designed to get Freeman McNeil out in the flat, one-on-one, -on -one, and the quickness of Jackson to get over there and make the play resulted in a fourth down situation for the Jets. Dave Jennings will punt for the second time today. He's standing at his 11. And he will punt to Mike Martin, reactivated for today's game. Bengals have had all kinds of problems with the punt return situation. Ray Horton in the middle of those difficulties last couple of weeks, and Martin has hit immediately. A big hit by Marion Barber. 37-yard punt, and Marion Barber downfield in a hurry. And Martin, as you said, just activated this week. Wanted to get back into some action, and he certainly did. We'll be right back. This baby will blow the doors off anything on the road, just like a BMW. Isn't she a beauty? <laughs> BMW would build one like this. You think BMW has advanced technology? Listen to this. Your door is open. Huh? For about $22,000, you can own a BMW 325 for the hollow feeling of having settled for less. One touch from Nikon. It puts great photography at everybody's fingertips. The Nikon 35mm action touch. The waterproof, all-weather, automatic camera that puts great photography at everybody's fingertips. Hi, give me a light. But if you just ask for a light, give me a light. You never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Bud light. So if you want the less smelling light beer with the first name it takes, ah, the tiny car. Don't just ask for a light beer. Can I have a light? Ask them to bring out their best. No. Bud light. Bud light. Because everything else is just a light. Bud light. On New Year's Day, the best and brightest of the bowls are on NBC. Quarterback Jim Harbaugh leads the fourth-ranked Michigan Wolverines against the Pac-10 champion Sun Devils of Arizona State at the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. College football's best and brightest are on NBC Sports. As you can see, that Cincinnati high-power offense is very much at work here in this third quarter. Jets knew coming in that they like to control the ball to keep it away from Messiah's and in that offense. It's been a heckle, a Jekyll and Hyde type of thing, and last week they were off. This week they certainly are on their game. And Messiah's in his 14 for 18, 205 yards on first down, able to complete the tight end Pettis. Eric Pettis, the rookie from Michigan. On a pass play for the first down for Cincinnati. Gets on an all-out blitz. Isaiah's in rolling away, and in the blitz confusion, nobody picked up the tight end, Caddis, the second tight end. Mentioned earlier, when you blitz, you put your secondary and your linebackers in one-on-one -on -one situations, and you give an opportunity for the offense to make some big plays. He had stepped out at the 36, so a 28-yard play, and a first down for Cincinnati. Sam Weish and his Bengals leading the Jets. 24-21. Six minutes in, third quarter. Brooks. Run out by the free safety, Harry Hamilton. Kansas City leading Pittsburgh now 24-6. to six For Cincinnati to get into the playoffs as a wild card. They must win here against the Jets and then hope for a loss 
or a tie by Kansas City or a loss tomorrow night by New England against Miami. Sam White said he hopes that the uh, scoreboard is not working as far as the Pittsburgh-Kansas City game. He didn't want any of his players looking up there, but I think the score now, they can start looking up. Second down and five. Esiason in trouble. Gets it away. And completes for the touchdown. Eddie Brown on the score, but a penalty marker is down. Jerry Holmes says it's going to be on the offense, but let's get the call. Offensive pass interference, number 81. And it was Brown pushing off, so they'll bring it back. Well, as soon as the ball was caught by Brown, Holmes immediately started giving the push sign and looked at the uh, back judge, and the, fish, the flag was right there, and the call was made. Again, Marv, the Jets in, in a blitz mode, sending their linebackers in one of their corners. And when you do that, you can make some big plays. The size and can scramble around. Offensive pass interference, number 81. He gives them the time to run away from the blitz and allows his uh, two uh, receivers, uh, big play receivers, uh, to get open downfield. Getting back to that wild card situation, it could turn out the wild card game would match the same two clubs back here. Next Sunday, the Jets and the Bengals here in Cincinnati. Second down and 16. That is Brooks in motion. And Esiason goes deep for Collinsworth. Touchdown. has Carter man to man he makes a move to the outside there's no help in the middle of the field he sighs and throws it deep and far away from Carter and that's what we're talking about when you blitz sometimes you get burned with a big play a 42 yard pass play and Collinsworth with his ninth touchdown reception of the season here is Breach with Kreider to put it down Three plays, 64 yards. The Bengals lead the Jets by 10. Introducing Wendy's new big classic hamburger. The soft Kaiser bun, the fat tomatoes, the fresh toppings, the beef. Wendy's new big classic. The human eye is remarkably sensitive to light. That's why we make the GE soft white bulb. An ordinary frosted bulb has a glaring hot spot because it doesn't have the high diffusion coating of the GE Soft White. A soft, warm, glowing light that's sensitive to the needs of the human eye. Now there's a new GE Soft White specifically designed to give you a brighter, soft light that's better for reading. The GE Soft White Reader Light. our engineers to daydream and this is what happens when they do introducing the bmw 535 is for a more leisurely look visit your authorized bmw dealer the people who bring you budweiser wish you and yours the very best of everything this holiday season wishes for a happy holiday season our electronic greetings card from the folks at NBC Sports just under six minutes to go in the third quarter and now Kansas City in front 24-13 quarterback Mark Malone just ran one in from nine yards away and here at Riverfront in Cincinnati the Bengals lead the Jets 31 to 21 and the Bengals on fire with 840 left in the third 
The kickoff by Breach. Humphrey to the 20. Did not get out of the crowd as he moved to the 25-yard line. And the Bengals are all sparked up. Let's go back to the touchdown, Marv. Here is the safety, Hamilton. He's going to come out of the middle of the field because of a blitz. The wide receiver is going to go down the field in the bottom of your screen. Now watch Hamilton come out. Collinsworth at the bottom is going to go down to the middle of the field, the place that was vacated because Hamilton had to come up because of the blitz situation. Big play for the Bengals. Jets first down from the 26. Tunis to the left side. And it's McNeil out to the 30. All right, set for an update and a rare appearance by Bob Costas at NFL 86. Just a cameo entirely for your enjoyment, Marv. Here's Mark Malone off the play fake, takes off left side, picks up a block, nine-yard TD as he cuts back, and it cuts Kansas City's lead to 24-13 in the third at Pittsburgh. As you know, Bengals need a win of their own and either a Chief or a Patriot loss. Thank you, Bob. A second down and five at the 31. O'Brien with the time and then brought down. David Fulcher, the strong safety, coming up with the first Cincinnati sack of the day and his second of the year. And you saw the frustration on Joe Walton's face. O'Brien looking to Al Toon to go deep. Now, he wasn't there, but he's trying to make something out of it. He waited too long. He should have come off to his outlet receiver. But sometimes when the plays aren't there against the defense as you're hoping and you're trying to force things to happen you hold the ball too long he should have given up and hit his outlet most of the Cincinnati blitz work has gone up the middle wouldn't you think that O'Brien would be moving out of the pocket and now he is in trouble McNeil for a loss Lewis Freeman on the stop Freeman McNeil. Let's look at Al Toon, one of the receivers that he was looking downfield for. He gets jammed at the line of scrimmage. Now you can't go out of bounds. He's done for the play. Phillips did a nice job of pushing him out of bounds. And if there's one word to describe the Jets right now, Marv, it's frustrated. You could see it on Walton's face. You could see it on O'Brien's face. They needed to make some big plays. They're all pressing to make one big play to get them back in the How game. How about another word? Rattled. Battered and bruised. How about those two? All right, Jennings punting for the third time. And here is Mike Martin. A 40-yard line drive by Jennings. And Cincinnati will take over with 6.20 to go. Third quarter. Shack makes your children's Christmas dreams come true. Look, it's a Radio Shack toy factory. Wow, an electronic organ. And there's a programmable off-roader and big wheel truck. Oh, it's the Pops I Watch, just like I dreamed about. I get the fire going. I love Teddy Talk. Is this your dream or mine? Guess I'll wake up in the morning and find out. Battery-operated toys from 259, only at Radio Shack. The BMW 735i is one of those rare luxury sedans engineered by driving enthusiasts. While other luxury sedans announce to the world you've arrived, the new BMW 735i offers you the considerable advantage of arriving a bit sooner. For a test drive, contact your local BMW dealer.
come home for the holidays to an American tradition with the AP All-America football team and Heisman Trophy winner Vinny Testaverde. Grab Bob Hope's bank full of Christmas cheer tonight. All right, if Cincinnati holds on and wins here today, and if Kansas City holds on and beats Pittsburgh, it comes down from the Cincinnati point of view to tomorrow night, and they would need a loss by New England against Miami. The Dolphins have beaten uh, New England in the Orange Bowl 17 of the last 18 times. The Dolphins are playing very well right now, and I think that's a very real possibility that uh, the Dolphins can beat them. But New England has done it before. They won in last year's game down there to break that string. So uh, the Bengals playing very well right now will need some help tomorrow night. And if all that pans out, it could be a Cincinnati-Kansas City wild card game. James Brooks, the ball carrier. On the first down play, Tom Baldwin, the nose tackle, making the stop. Kansas City in front of Pittsburgh, late third quarter. Philly leads Washington. And Cleveland having an easy time against San Diego. Minnesota walloping New Orleans. And Atlanta leading Detroit. Second and seven at the 42. Stanford Jennings has come on as a running back. 540 left, third quarter. Nice take. And Esiason, who took a hit, goes incomplete. The intended receiver, the tight end, Eric Caddis. And Esiason shaken up. Boomer Esiason emerging last year after spending his rookie season learning the trade. Last year finished second of the AFC behind Ken O'Brien, completing 58% of his passes. Having an excellent day today, 16 of 21, 275 yards. And as you can see, O'Brien struggling once again, only 84 yards through the air. Third down and seven. And the Bengals have done it in third down situations today. You see the Jets up, up there, his size and checking off. Now watch and see if the men behind the line come or if they drop off. No blitz. And Esiason runs for the first down. Once again, demonstrating the mobility. He has run very well. Esiason was fooled at the line of scrimmage. He had checked off, expecting a blitz. He called something, a quick slant pattern, probably. It was not there, but he has the ability to get outside and pick up the first down on his own. A lopsided edge for the Bengals over the Jets in the second half. Boomer Esiason, Cincinnati's leading rusher thus far this afternoon, carried four times for 45 yards. First down, midfield, five and a half to go, third quarter. the short yardage pickup. You know, Marv, we're talking about the Bengals and the Jets and Kansas City about getting into the playoffs. I'm sure there's a, a group of New England Patriots watching this game also very anxiously. What they needed, obviously, they want to win the ball game tomorrow night in, in Miami, and if they do, they win the division. If they lose, however, they needed a loss uh, by a couple of these teams, and all the teams they needed to lose are winning. So it's going to get down to New England having to win tomorrow night in Miami to make the playoffs. And if they win, they win the division. What a strange finish. Second and nine. Jennings, the intended receiver. So third down play coming up. It will be a third down and nine with four and a half left. Third quarter. Are they on the hurry up? As we got a brief glimpse of the playoff picture. <laughs> the hurry-up offense is uh, not a favorable maneuver in terms of uh, television directors and producers. <laughs> He's at the line of scrimmage taking his time. It's the hurry-up slowdown, Bob. And the tight end, Holman, for a first down. What that does, Mark, 
you, you can see he was taking his time once he lined up at the line of scrimmage. When he gets up there, it prevents the Jets from substituting because he could go at any time. Now, once you get at the line of scrimmage, you can take your time, call your play. That's exactly what he did. He looked over the defense, took his time, and then hit Holman on a little release or an outlet pattern. It's a big play. The Bengal offense, very impressive here in the second half. 27-yard pass play, Rodney Holman having a terrific day. Five-year man from Tulane. Tulane University's all-time leading receiver. First down at the Jet 22. The Bengals lead it 31 to 21. Play action again. Incomplete. Intended for Chris Collinsworth. The coverage by the free safety, Harry Hamilton. Now, if there's no hurry up offense here, <laughs> let's uh, scan the playoff picture. Uh, Cincinnati wins. They're 10 and 6, and uh, New England would be 10 and 6 if they lost. Seattle is 10 and 6, and Kansas City would be 10 and 6, and New England has already lost to Cincinnati and to Seattle. So they need to, they'll need to win tomorrow night. Second and ten. Asiasen for Collinsworth. And a first down. Hamilton on the tackle. And Rumor Asiasen getting the time throughout the afternoon. Well, you're looking at two different offenses and two different quarterbacks. One's on a roll, and the other one has had his roll, and he's struggling. And you ask, what, when things are going well, how do, what's going right for you? And when things are not going well for you, what can you do? Well, if you could bottle it, when, it was, when you're going well, if you could just bottle that stuff so that when things aren't going well, you could shake it all over your offense or your defensive players. But it doesn't work that way. The size is on a roll. And a first and goal from the 10. Asiasen completing Kennebrew. Crowd reacting to Larry Kennebrew. Russell Carter on the stop. For those of you who have been watching the Buffalo Bills and the Houston Oilers, we apologize for the uh, technical problems, but we're delighted to have you with us. Marv Albert, Bob Greasy from Cincinnati. A Jet player is down. The Bengals lead the Jets 31-21, 3.21 to go in this third quarter. And when we resume, Cincinnati will have a second and goal from the two. Russell Carter is the injured Jet player. Take a look at the play now. He fakes the Kinnerbrew. Now he's looking downfield. Kinnerbrew is going to slide through the line of scrimmage and just over Lyons' his hands. Now watch the first man just fall off of him. That's Crable. Doesn't even phase uh, Kenner Brew, who's about 265 or 70. Three uh, Jets on the tackle. Carter still on the ground being attended to by trainer Bobby Reese. Russell Carter has had an injury play career. They are just underway fourth quarter, and Pittsburgh showing some signs of life. They have it third down. And three at the Kansas City 13 as that fourth quarter gets underway and we'll uh, keep you posted. Russell Carter in his third season out of SMU. The starting right cornerback who the last couple of years has been in and out of that jet lineup. Head coach Joe Walt. It's been a tough year for Walton and the Jets. I mean, they were... If you would have stopped the season after 11 games, Walton wins the coach of the year. O'Brien is the MVP, but it doesn't stop. It goes on. Uh, Walton has had a uh, history of coming out of the shoot very quickly, and his teams have faded toward the end of the year. But uh, they made the playoffs. They did not back into the playoffs. They earned their way in. Uh, they won. They won 10 games early in the season, and if 10 games is good enough, this is. Take another look as uh, it looks like uh, Carter going head to head with Kennebrew may have uh, been suffered. I think he just got knocked loony a little bit. 
And the Jets have been battered by injury, but if the Bengals do hold on and win here, a brutal way for the Jets to enter the playoffs with five consecutive losses. Kennebrew and Wilson are the running back, second and goal from the two. Play action. Asayasin with the touchdown. It's the tackle eligible Anthony Munoz, who's done it before, has done it again. He has two catches this year, both the touchdowns, and I wonder if that long delay, Munoz wasn't over on the sideline lobbying Sam White, saying, yeah. hey, let's do it, let's do it. Anthony Munoz, who is headed to the Pro Bowl for a sixth straight year, not on the strength of his touchdown receptions. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure that they're going to say he's going to, because they only have two tight ends at the Pro Bowl, he'll be the third one. He'll probably be asking the coach, hey, I've got two touchdowns. Let's put a tight end eligible, or tackle eligible. A 16-point lead for Cincinnati, and here is Breach the Bengals a 38 to 21 lead with two minutes and 54 seconds to go in this third quarter well when you're winning you're all smiles play action fake it took Munoz a while to get out there to clear all of the uh, defensive men he jumps into the air <laughs> all right Munoz closest it took him a while to get released but his size and Knew that it would take time. Just uh, scrambled around a little bit, bought some time, and now Munoz says there's nothing to it. Six foot six, 278 pounds. In his seventh season out of the University of Southern California, Anthony Munoz gets on the scorecard. SC, the uh, alma mater of our producer, David Neal. Pittsburgh settling for the field goal, so their early fourth quarter, and Kansas City in front, 24-16. You got to say something too, Marv, about the Steelers and how well they're playing lately and and, and and fighting back. They're not in the playoff picture at all, but they're just they're playing for the other teams that are scrambling uh, to get into the playoffs, and the Steelers are uh, giving it their best shot. And Chuck, no, I think you have to give him credit for getting his team up to play. Steelers. Blasting uh, the Jets last week, 45-24. Kick off by Breach. Some confusion as Townsell takes it. Jojo Townsell putting the speed on. And a fumble. Down. Well, he was down first, so the whistle blown. A 41-yard return by Jojo Townsell. Ron Simpkins on the stop for Cincinnati. This punt return, punt coverage Holding. by the Bengals is not working. 49 on the return. Holding on, on Page on the return. But every return that the Jets have had, kickoff return, they have done very well. And uh, I'm sure that Sam White is going to have to take a look at that theory about the coverage on kickoff. A game that opened with a 96-yard return by Bobby Humphrey. Humphrey had another strong return later on in the first half. Larry Pasquale, the coach of the special teams, upset as they bring it back to the 10-yard line, rather the 15-yard line. Here's McNeil. Off the slant. Has the first down. Well, that was a big play, that kickoff return, taking that away from the Jets because the Jets were out near the 50. If they have any hopes of getting back in the ball game, 17 points down, uh, they still have a, the fourth quarter to play, but that was a big bonus for them to come out to midfield. Cincinnati Bengals have scored each of their last five possessions. Larry Pasquale takes great pride in his special teams. Another good run by McNeil, able to pick his way for the first down. Stopped by the outside linebacker, Reggie Williams. Take another look at the play as Banker is pulling to the right. That's Bingham, 64. McNeil just seems to be taking the attitude, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to run through tackles. I think the entire offense, the whole attitude of the Jets now as they look down the barrel behind 17 points is, let's go out and just do it. 
17-yard run by McNeil. Penalty flag. And McNeil, on the handoff, just pulls up. Mickey Schuler had some words. One of the Bengals. Ball start. Number 64, offense. Guy Bingham, the left guard. Joe Fields was not supposed to play because of a, a, a back injury, but he has been in there right throughout. So Fields at center, Guy Bingham and Dan Alexander have been the guards. Gordon King and Jim Sweeney at the tackle. The Jets now first down and 15 from their 39 with a minute and 10 left. Third quarter. And O'Brien couldn't find anyone and is sacked. Ross Browner coming up with Cincinnati's second sack of the day. Good pressure from Reggie Williams, but Browner making it six and a half sacks on the season. Good pressure up front that the coverage was there downfield. It's a trap pass, play action fake. Now, the coverage is there, you gotta throw it away. When you're in the groove, you make the adjustments. When you're not in the groove, you take the sack. O'Brien was sacked five times last week by Pittsburgh. This is the second for the Bengals today, so he has been sacked last week as many times as Boomer Esiason has been sacked the last six weeks. Second down at 24. Back at the 30. It's all Cincinnati in this third quarter. And a big hit on Al Coon, who had his helmet unleashed by David Fulcher. We talked about it early on being a physical game. The Bengals were out hit last week. They wanted to come out and make sure they did all the hitting this week. They wanted to be an angry team. And right there is a good example of it. That right there will get you fired up. We see another look. Not much Tune could do about that, but the offense on the sideline, the special team, the other defensive players will get fired up just from that one play. And time has run out at the end of three. The Bengals 38, the Jets 21. We'll be back after these words from your local station. Loretta Young stars in A Touching Christmas Story as a mother struggling to bring her family together for the holidays. In Christmas Eve, Monday. Introducing the all-new Toyota Tercel for 1987. Simply more bang for the buck. Tercel for 87, Toyota's lowest price car, now gives you explosive new styling. More power to pass with a new 12-valve fuel-efficient engine and quality that has made Toyota Tercel more trouble-free than any other new car sold in its class. Drive it. You'll get a bang out of it. Pepsi Cola soft drinks in eight 16 ounce bottles, just a dollar thirty nine. Kroger ground coffee, any variety, is two fifty nine for a one pound can. And Oscar Mayer all meat sliced bologna is only a dollar sixty nine for a one pound package. of the heartland. A wheat brew beer. It's wheat that makes this a gutsier beer. Born wild, raised proud. Miller makes it, and they call it Dakota. Straight from the heartland. Dakota, the wheat brew beer. Season's greetings. Back 
back in Cincinnati. Fourth quarter getting underway. Marv Albert with Bob Greasy. The Bengals outscoring the Jets 21-0 in the third to take a 38-21 lead. And the Jets third and 19 from that 35. O'Brien going deep and it is intercepted. Lewis Breeden. Breeden with his sixth interception of the season. And the Bengals take over. Zone coverage. Breeden's going to let him go. Now watch Breeden. He lets him go. Now he's going to hurl. Breeden still sees the ball coming. Comes back to the inside right there and makes the interception. It's marvelous. Just amazing how well O'Brien was playing early on and he wouldn't try to force that ball in there, but when you're trying to make things happen, early in the season, they were ahead of everybody. Now they're behind, and they have to try and make plays, and they're not doing it. Second interception of the day, thrown by O'Brien, 19th on the year. Do you think we might see Pat Ryan? I think at this stage you might. I mean, uh, he's gone with him. He's not playing that well. Jennifer is stacked up. The first down play, the nose tackle, Tom Baldwin. Leading the uh, Jets on the stop of Larry Kinnebrew. Some people thought that maybe O'Brien uh, should have been benched and maybe Ryan play. I don't agree with that because O'Brien has to play through the down times and he's going to have some. And he's having one right now for a few games. But you have to come out of it. But there are also times within a game where if you want to try and win the game, you say, well, maybe I can put the other quarterback in there and if it doesn't help the team maybe it'll help O'Brien when he comes back in the next time second and nine Cincinnati from their 47 play action and a looping toss to Kennebrew and Kennebrew handling himself in the open field refusing to go down a 30 yard pass play is a little bit of misdirection. As you see, one guard pulling one way, another part guard the other way, and the other guard, number 28, catching the football. He weighs as much as those other guards. You may want to call him a guard. Kennebrew doesn't want to go down. Holmes gets a free ride. And everything is going right for the Bengals. Bob, you get the idea that Jet defense is virtually helpless against the Bengals in the second half? In the second half, you know, we said they're battered and bruised. Their morale is down right now. The attitude of the Jets is probably as low as it's been in the last four or five weeks. Cincinnati, first down of the Jet 20. Collinsworth to the left. Brown goes slot left. That's Brown 81. And Brooks split to the right. Fumble by Kittiber. And Crable may have recovered for the Jets. He did. So Bob Crable on the recovery, and the Jets take over. The second turnover in today's game for the Cincinnati native, uh, Bob Crable. As you take another look, Kennebrew has been in the doghouse because of weight and fumbles, and right there, he may be back in the doghouse. Bob Crable played his high school ball at Moeller High here in Cincinnati, coming up with the fumble. In today's world, a luxury car owes you more than just luxury. Today's Chrysler New Yorker gives you advanced front-wheel drive confidence, performance engineering, and is the only American luxury car with the impressive thrust of turbo power and the Chrysler Protection Plan. Today's New Yorker, even though you're in the lap of luxury, you're still in the driver's seat. Chrysler, driving to be the best. I get the chance I head for these mountains. Of course I enjoy these mountains too, the mountains of Bush beer. And now you can enjoy the Bush holiday sweepstakes. Grand prize is a trip for six to ski in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. It's easy to enter. For further details, look for this display of participating retailers. So come on, head for these mountains. With a little luck, you'll be heading for these mountains too. At Braun, we believe simple is better than complicated. Order is better than confusion. Quiet is better than loud. 
Only through superior design can one achieve superior performance. It is this philosophy that has helped make Braun the number one selling foil shaver in the world. What's also helped is that no other shaver gives you a closer shave. Braun, now available in America. Today's game is brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth. We're working together to be the best. By Budweiser, Beechwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by Minolta, creator of the incredible Maxim Autofocus SLR system. Only from the mind of Minolta. What could be a critical series for the Jets. They have the opportunity with the turnover on the fumble by Kennebrew. So they take over. First down from their 27 with two minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. Cincinnati in front, 38 to 21. O'Brien could not find anyone and threw it away. Schuler, the intended receiver. We're set for an update. Let's get back to Bob Costas at NFL 86. Okay, Marv, thanks very much. Those of you with us for the pregame show saw Paul McGuire make this point about the Jets, that they're averaging only eight points in the second half. Now look at the line score from today's game, which started promisingly for New York, but things have fallen apart since intermission. Let's go back to Marvin Bob. Yes, so Paul has been on fire, something I'm sure the Jets do not appreciate. Bengals. Looking to deal the Jets a fifth straight defeat with a 38 to 21 lead. Second and 10 from the 27th. Here's Toon on a reverse. Does not work. David Fulcher was right with him. The whole Jet offense, Marv, is demoralized, and it comes right from the top, and that's Kenny O'Brien. He is, he is. Uh, He's not, com not playing with the confidence that he needs. He's demoralized. Kansas City defensively has taken some of the things away from him as we look at, at the Kansas City-Pittsburgh store. No change there. But this offense and the entire Jet team is demoralized right now, and you can tell in the way they're playing. So, second, uh, third down play. Third and 14 from the 22. Now O'Brien the run but way short of the first down run out by Ray Horton and here comes the jet punting unit is it possible that the 45 to 3 loss to the Dolphins crushed the Jets several weeks ago can can one game destroy a team no that one game cannot do it it was it they were they could could not continued to play the way they had been playing before then. The Dolphin game started it. The Ram game the following week continued it, and uh, they were due to be down. O'Brien was due for a couple of off weeks, and he's had them. All right, the punt played by Martin. Why do you say he was due? I, I could understand injuries, but he was a lot of quarterbacks go through seasons. Penalty flag has been thrown also. He was playing he was playing like Superman. I mean, uh, and then he, he couldn't continue to do that. There was no way. The timing was there. The play, the right play was called at the right time. The receivers were getting open. Everything was going the Jets' way. It could not continue to go the way it was going. They had field position. The defensive backs were knocking the ball out. They led the league in uh, turnover and fumbles. Uh, All right, the face mask indicated by Pat Haggard. It just couldn't continue, Marv, going. Kansas City leads Pittsburgh 24-19 on a field goal by Gary Anderson with 7.50 remaining in the fourth quarter. So Pittsburgh very much alive, trailing 24-19. Kansas City still has not scored an offensive touchdown, scoring three times with their special team. Gallagher used the hand on the return reacting to that Pittsburgh Kansas City score and we'll take a break 
Introducing the unbelievable American, under $7,800. The Plymouth Sundance Series. Plymouth Sundance, the best value of any car in its class, including the imports. 47 standard features to convince you. Five-year or 50,000-mile protection plan to assure you. Plymouth Sundance, the unbelievable American, under $7,800. The pride is back, born in America. Who has transformed video cameras, Ooh. making them more compact, simpler, more colorful, more fun? Who? RCA. With the new Pro Wonder Camcorder, the camera and recorder that uses standard VHS cassettes plus solid-state technology for brighter, more colorful memories. Pro Wonder. If you settle for less than RCA, that's exactly what you'll get. Being there, that's what being a State Farm agent is all about. When Scott and Dickey started to outgrow their insurance, we got together and reviewed it all. The new house, a second car, life and health coverages too. A State Farm family insurance checkup can be a big help. It's free, and it's there because things change. And like a good neighbor... Right, Jason? White cop to black cop. Everybody's talking about a cover-up. There's no cover-up. Racial tension heats the hill. I'm sitting on an explosive situation here. A race war. Hill Street Blues, Tuesday. Here in Cincinnati, the Bengals blowing out the Jets in the second half. Lead it by 17. Some of you along our network will be uh, switching over to Houston and Pittsburgh. So you'll join up with uh, Don Cricky and Bob Trumpy, I should say, uh, Kansas City and, uh, and Pittsburgh. Here's a reverse fake, and Brooks has the first down. 20-yard run by James Brooks. Rich Miano ran him out. Sam Weiss now going to his bag of tricks. Fake reverses. You know, I always uh, thought that was taking one man out of the blocking when you sent your flanker around, but... Uh, Obviously, some of these times, sometimes these things are going to work, but and when they do, you look good, but when they don't, not so good. But everything is rolling Cincinnati's way here in the second half. James Brooks in a sixth season out of Auburn. First down at midfield. And Kennebrew, who has run very well. He did fumble in his... Uh, last carry, but Sam Weiss staying with him, and Kinnebrew's had a good day. Rich Miano on the stop. That's the KC Pittsburgh situation in the fourth quarter. Cleveland going into the playoffs with a head of steam, huh? Home field advantage throughout. You talk about hot teams and cold teams. We're looking at one of the cold teams, the Jets. Cleveland's got to be the hottest team in the AFC. They're going to have home field advantage throughout the playoffs as long as they're in it. And it's not how many games you win to get in the playoffs, but it's who's hot at the right time. Unfortunately for the Jets, they're going in the opposite direction. Second and one. And Kennebrew with the first down and some additional yardage down to the 25. Very tough to bring him down when he's running well. Russell Carter made the stop. 16-yard run. We can't tell you exactly how much Kennebrew weighs because... I don't think anybody knows that you see a lot of arm tackles and guys bouncing off of him. It'd probably be in the neighborhood of 270 pounds. Well, the program weight says 258, and that is uh, generous in his favor. That was his training camp weight yes. back in August. <laughs> First out of the 25. Ten minutes to go. Fourth quarter. Here's Brooks. And he's submarine. Brooks was to the outside following Brian Blados Harry Hamilton on the stop well no team in the history of the NFL has ever lost its last five games and made the playoffs the Jets are assured of a uh, playoff spot at least of a, a wild card spot at the very least uh, speaks well of how well they played early. They were obviously 10 and 1, but uh, they've not played well of late. Second down and six. 
Down at the Jet 21-yard line. Esiason for Collinsworth. And Collinsworth able to get away from Holmes for the touchdown as third of the day. A 21-yard touchdown pass play. Exactly the way the play was designed, Marv. You get one-on-one -on, -one on a wide on your uh, to your wide receiver on your defensive back. The thing that's amazing about Collinsworth is he's six foot five and still has the foot speed, and he's quick enough to get around somebody. When you're a defensive back out there on an island, you just want to come up and make the tackle. Steve Kreider will put it down for Jim Breach. So the Bengals have now outscored the Jets 28 to nothing in the second half and lead it 45 to 21. Reminds me of last week when the Steelers scored 28 unanswered points against the Jets. As we go back to the touchdown, it's a little stop pattern. Now Holmes needs to come up and just make the tackle and wait for help to arrive. He goes up and Collinsworth runs around him can do no wrong. They have, like we said earlier, the second offense total yardage-wise in the National Football League. They have a lot of guns, but sometimes they come to the ballpark and they're not loaded. Today, they're loaded. Kenny Anderson, who has had a relaxing uh, afternoon, 37 years old, a 16-year pro, had a brilliant career, making it to the Pro Bowl five times, and now the man backing up uh, Boomer Esiason. Anderson if he's going to come back next year. Clay says, well, he's Players Association's going for a new contract. He says, I don't know. The benefits may increase some. I better come back just to check those out. So. And uh, here's a new twist. Jeff Hayes will kick it off rather than Jim Breach. And we're told Pittsburgh in possession on its own 30 with about six minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. So here's the kickoff by Hayes, who did occasionally kick off with the Washington Redskins. Bobby Humphrey on the return. And good coverage by the Bengals. Down to nine minutes left, fourth quarter. And Cincinnati leading it 45-21. That Cincinnati coverage on the kickoff return led by Leon White. A couple of records to uh, pass on as Pat Ryan checks in, replacing Ken O'Brien, Boomer Esiason. Uh, check that. No, uh, O'Brien remains. still in, yeah. Was the indication that Ryan was coming on, but O'Brien does uh, remain for this first down at the uh, 21. And here's McNeil. Boomer Esiason, by throwing five touchdowns, has set a Cincinnati team record. And Chris Collinsworth, in catching that last TD, his third of the day, makes it 35 over his career. So uh, that puts him in a second-place tie on the Cincinnati record book with a fellow by the name of Bob Trumpy. Right, yeah. Well, Collinsworth had problems last week against the small, aggressive, man-to-man, -man, bump and run style defense of the Cincinnati, uh, I mean, of the Cleveland Browns, only catching one pass, but uh, against the Jets, has a little bit more freedom to move around, doing very well. All right, Tony Page with the short yardage. It's a third down and two at the 30. Eight minutes to go in this fourth quarter. And here is McNeil turning it for the first down. Tossed out by Ray Horton. Well, I think I think this would be a good time. I think this would be a good time for Ryan, for Walton to go with Ryan to give Ryan a little experience, get O'Brien out of the game, maybe create some positive uh, uh, offense on the part of the New York Jets. And it's a first down at the 34-yard line. Play action, and O'Brien throws it away. 
And let's see if uh, we'll get a call here. No jet receiver in sight. Good rush by Eddie Edwards. All right, Pittsburgh now with a uh, third down at eight from their 40. For those of you particularly here in uh, Cincinnati who are interested in the uh, progress of the Kansas City Pittsburgh game, we'll uh, keep you posted on a play-by-play -play, uh, basis. If Cincinnati is to make it to the playoffs as a wild card, they must win today and then hope for a loss or a tie by Kansas City or a loss tomorrow night by New England. We'll be right back. Nothing escapes the eye of Maxim. The world's first SLR with built-in autofocus, Minolta Maxim focuses by itself. Sharp, fast. Only the human eye focuses faster. With Minolta Maxim, you even get unexpected shots that would have gotten away. The incredible Maxim system. Only from the mind of Minolta. When you're behind the wheel in the Baron GTS, it's nice to know GTS excelled in handling in a U.S. Auto Club test. Did 0 to 50 in 5.63 seconds. Triumphed in braking and gave BMW and Mercedes something they never expected. A driving lesson. GTS comes sensibly priced with Chrysler's protection plan. You don't drive the Baron GTS the way USAC did. But it's nice to know you could. Chrysler driving to be the best. Here at Hewlett Packard, we think long and hard about your business computing system and how it can help your people share more information and make better decisions. So before we talk hardware, we answer a lot of hard questions. At Hewlett Packard, we never stop asking, what if? They need a network package between sales and shipping. What if we took a new approach to the problem? The way I see it, the people. On New Year's Day, the best and brightest of the bowls are on NBC as All-American Brian Bosworth leads the third-ranked Oklahoma Sooners against the Razorbacks from Arkansas. Plus, the beauty and pageantry of the famed halftime at the Orange Bowl. College football's best and brightest are on NBC Sports. at the Kansas City 39, second and two, as we keep you posted on Kansas City and Pittsburgh. Second and ten for O'Brien, and Schuler with the first down. He was surprised that there was no one around him. He looking looked to, to lateral. Looking lateral to Page. He was wanting to lateral it a couple of times. Lewis Phillips on the stop. Final score, Atlanta over Detroit, 20 to six. Jets have a first down, seven and a half to go in this fourth quarter. And a 45-21 single lead. And O'Brien is hauled down. Emmanuel King, number 90, with Cincinnati's third sack of the day. He leads the Bengals with sack number nine on the season. A second-year man from Alabama. First-round draft pick of the Bengals last year. And this figures to be a very long and unhappy charter flight back to the New York area for the Jets. What this is doing for the Bengals, it's increasing their momentum with which they're going into the playoffs. The Jets are going just the opposite. They're going in the, in the direct opposite uh, direction that they need to be going to be playing in the playoffs next week. And they could be the AFC East champion if New England gets beat tomorrow night. That is incomplete. Brendan McNeil not able to come up with it. That pass was uh, thrown a little low. And we're told that Kansas City was just hit with a pass interference call. So Pittsburgh has a first down at the Kansas City 20. I tell you, this is a first for me. I've never done play-by-play <laughs> -play play without seeing the game. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. I'm thinking, okay, who, who's the quarterback now for uh, Pittsburgh Malone? He's back to pass. Third down, 16. And down goes O'Brien again. And Barney Bussey, the rookie from South Carolina State, celebrating his safety blitz. 
with the frame of mind that O'Brien is in right now, by playing him any longer, cannot do him any good. They need to get him out of there and get Ryan in there to try to create some positive things. Even O'Brien on the sideline and watching somebody else get their brains beat out would help him. Would you have taken him out earlier, say third quarter? No, I would have taken him out a couple of series ago. You had to start him, you had to play him, he was doing fine. But things have turned around, and, it's, and now it's too much like what has happened the last four or five weeks. And Dave Jennings putting from his 20. Mike Martin. They call the fair cat. Cincinnati ball now with 6-17 remaining. 38-yard punt. Kansas City with an interception of Malone with just over two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter and the Chiefs leading Pittsburgh 24-19. Chiefs leading the victory to clinch a playoff spot. Cincinnati first down for the 27. Bengals gunning for a record of 10 and 6. It's a team that has been on a roller coaster. They clobbered the Browns in Cleveland earlier. Last week, they're blown out by Cleveland here in Cincinnati, a team that lost in Houston, lost to Pittsburgh, a team that beat Seattle, able to wallop to England. There's Brooks for the first down. James Brooks stopped by Troy Benson. Mark, three weeks ago, the Bengals were in New England and blew away New England 31 to 7. All the fans here in Cincinnati had high hopes the Cleveland Browns were coming to town. The uh, Battle of Ohio, they were calling it, and the Browns came to their park and just blew them away. This week, they're coming back and playing like they did the week two weeks ago when they uh, blew away the uh, Patriots. So you never know who you're going to get when you go to the ballpark to watch the Bengals. Brooks picked up 14, so he's run for 75 yards on the day. First down at the 40. And it's Brooks again. Down to six minutes to go. Fourth quarter, Tom Baldwin, the nose tackle, making the stop. The Jets coming in, loses a four straight. They were belted around by Pittsburgh last week. At one point, the Jets were 10 and 1. They've lost to Pittsburgh, at San Francisco, at Miami, lost at home to the Rams. You know, Marv, I, 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 as we take a look at the playoff picture again, I try to, to picture myself in the situation that the Jets are, are in and are going through. You know, have I ever gone through anything like that? I'll get back to that in just a minute. And a fumble. Covered up by Boomer Esiason. Set for another update. Let's go to Bob Costas and NFL 86. All right, Marv, here it is. Just over two minutes to play in Pittsburgh. The Steelers driving, but Mark Malone hit as he throws a wobbly pass intercepted by Albert Lewis in Kansas City territory to end the Steeler drive, and the Chiefs cling to the 24-19 lead. Thank you, Bob. Cincinnati third down and six from their 44. Clock running. Out of five minutes to go in this fourth quarter. 32nd clock is down to three. And Esiason with all kinds of time as Eddie Brown. Eddie Brown with some gorgeous moves. A 50-yard pass play. The coverage was there. Right now, he should have thrown the ball. Right now, he should have thrown the ball. He got too much time to throw. The secondary can't be blamed for that. It was a good, good job by that huge offensive line as we see Eddie Brown coming into the picture. Now he cuts back a couple of times. Big, big play for the Bengals. The offensive line, two Pro Bowlers this year, Montoya and Munoz going to the Pro Bowl, giving his size and all kinds of time to throw. You know, Brooks, Collinsworth, uh, Brown get all the notoriety of sizing, but it's that offensive line that makes it work. First and goal from the seven, and Larry Kinnebrew bowling his way through. See the time left in this fourth quarter. And once 
once again. Two and Walker shut down, and this has been a story the last five weeks. Kenny O'Brien has uh, not been able to find Wesley Walker. While Brown and Collins last, were, last week, when they only scored three points against the Cleveland Browns, Brown and Collinsworth were shut down for the most part by uh, Minifield and Dixon, the two fine cornerbacks for the Browns. This week, it's a different story. Second and goal from the two. Kennebrew is it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. And the Bengals piling it up here against the Jets. Bud Carson on the left there, talking with Joe Walton. Sam, got to be pleased with the way his team is playing today. Kansas City now forced to punt from their own 20 with two minutes remaining in the game. So Pittsburgh will have another opportunity. Jim Breach with another opportunity. And he's been perfect. Six plays, 73 yards, 599 total yards for Cincinnati. They now lead it 52 to 21. Well, the amazing thing about the Bengals is that how they can be so good one week and so bad the next week. I think that tells you a little bit about the emotional aspect of this game. If you're up and you can play, you're seeing it today in the Bengals. You're also seeing it on a season basis with the New York Jets. They were up the first 11, 12 games. The last four or five games has not been a very uh, emotional plus for the New York Jets. And again, Jeff Hayes will uh, kick off. I know that Breach had some problems with his back earlier in the year. And Sam Weish has made a switch on the kickoff. It's been a very productive day for Jim Breach, who has not had a good season, but 10 points on the day. Talk about the ups and downs of this NFL season. If Pittsburgh should come from behind and beat uh, Kansas City, and if uh, New England wins, wins tomorrow night against Miami and the wild card game would be right back here with the Jets going against Cincinnati I don't think the Jets want to be anywhere next week I think I think they're hoping that New England loses tomorrow night and they win the Eastern Division so they can have a week off that's the only chance the Jets have in the playoffs is if they get a week off to regroup Bobby Humphrey stopped by Leon White. And the Jets with 3.02 remaining in this fourth quarter will go back to the offense. An offense that has had a brutal day here in Cincinnati. All right, Pittsburgh first down from their 42 as uh, they start the drive under two minutes to go in that game. Brian firing, and it is picked off by Lewis Breeden. There's Breeden with his second interception of the day, and the embarrassment continues. I think it's a mistake on Joe Walton's part to leave O'Brien in the game because only this can happen. The game is lost. You've got to try and force things to happen. And when you throw more interceptions, O'Brien is just going to go further and further away from where you want him to get. You know, Marv, this happened to me uh, in my career. There was a, a stretch of games where we were playing with the Dolphins in the early 70s. We went three games without scoring a touchdown. The best thing that Don Shula did was to take me out of the ball game and set me down and start somebody else. Pittsburgh. Second and 10 now from the 40. Their first pass incomplete. Cincinnati Bengals have set a team record with 599 total yards. Stanley Wilson on the slant with two minutes and 40 seconds to go in this fourth quarter. And now an eight yard pickup. It is a third and two. For Pittsburgh at 
the Kansas City 48. And boy, those plays are being run very <laughs> fast. I'm told now an incomplete pass. So a fourth down and two for Pittsburgh. Right here, it is a second and four for the Bengals as uh, they play the clock down to the two-minute warning. Cincinnati Bengals lead the New York Jets 52 to 21. AT&T, the right choice. In Veterans Stadium, the Eagles and Falcons are tied at 17 in overtime. From their own one-yard line, should Philadelphia mount a drive on the ground to move within field goal range or risk going for it all with a pass from their own end zone? What would you do? I, I just lost two. Hey, Chief, we need an 800 number. We need more lines. I think we need help. I think we need a fax machine. I've been waiting for those new phones i think we need help today what a growing business needs most is finding out what it needs most from long distance to phone systems to telemarketing at&t has the answers no, but we need good stuff i think we need help call our small business specialists we can help what did you decide? Risking a possible safety, Jaworski elects to retreat into his end zone and fires to a streaking Mike Quick. 99 yards later, the Eagles earn a shocking overtime win. Philadelphia made the right choice. And we're told Malone attempting a pass to Lips went incomplete on a fourth down play. So, Kansas City takes over at the Pittsburgh 48 yard line and now we'll look to run out the clock and if they're able to do that Kansas City will clinch a playoff spot and uh, if that is so Cincinnati then with the win today must get a loss from the New England Patriots tomorrow night in Miami to make it to the playoffs. What a turnaround this year has been for Kansas City. Five and nine last year, fifth place, playing a weaker schedule because of that fifth place finish. Finishing 10 and six now, Kansas City, as we've updated that graphic, and that's the way it will be. Kansas Everybody City playing 16 games except New England. Gunning for their first playoff berth since 1971. Stanford Jennings on the sweep. Right at the marker, Matt Munger on the uh, stop. And despite the fact that uh, Seattle caught fire the last uh, couple of weeks, would be knocked out of it by the combination of a Kansas City win and a Cincinnati win. Correct. Thank you. You talk about hot football teams. <laughs> Thank you. That, that Seattle team has been hot the last few weeks. Is this a quiz? <laughs> <laughs> Jennings picked up the first down. Locked out of 115 left in the game. And here's Stanley Wilson. So the Jets will finish at 10 and 6 with five straight losses. Kyle Clifton on the stop. A minute to go. Kansas City gets into the playoffs, Marv. Every other team in the National Football League has been in the playoffs since Kansas City, and we're just told that the Kansas City game is over, so the Chiefs are in the playoffs. Kansas City beating Pittsburgh, hanging on to win it 24-19. 35 seconds remaining, second down play. Jennings on the carry again. 615 yards for Cincinnati. That is the most ever given up by the New York Jets. As the clock runs down. And the Jets conclude in horrendous fashion. A battered ball club going the other way after opening at the 10 and 1 at one stretch winning nine in a row and they finish at 10 and 6 but will go to the playoffs at least as the wild card while the Cincinnati Bengals now have to hope for Miami to knock off New England tomorrow night 
Esiason finished 23 out of 30 for 425 yards, five touchdowns, and one interception. So he is our Budweiser most valuable player, Boomer Esiason. Winning MVP honors. And what a day for Boomer. Boomer Esiason bouncing back from uh, last week. He was held to 151 yards passing by Cleveland a week ago. And bouncing back today with a uh, majestic performance. The Bengals over the Jets, 52-21.